Good morning, I'm Joseph Madelon. And I've been so blessed in life, I wanted to find a way to give back more, a way to truly serve you. And together with some amazing people, we've created It Matters, because we believe it truly matters how you start your day. So this message coming to you today from some phenomenal ministers will be motivating, inspiring, and passionate. We know if we can get your mind in the right place, you'll be in the right place for everything God has in store for you. We truly appreciate the opportunity to give you this gift. So please enjoy the show. I can do all things through Christ. Who gives me strength. Hello, my name is Wayne Lomax. And I am Antoinette Smith. And we want you to know that it, it matters. matters. So today, we're going to talk to you about having a spirit of happiness, but I want to talk to you uh, around the subject of how to be blessed in a blended family. Because increasingly, what I'm discovering is that more and more people are somehow connected with a blended family. I happen to serve as the pastor of the Fountain of New Life in Miami Gardens, Florida. And the first family mm -hmm. is a blended family. So, Antoinette, tell us a little bit about your family history. Yes, I grew up in a blended family, and today I have my own blended family. Well, that's awesome because you've uh, experienced the benefits of being in a household where persons have come from different places, had different experiences, <laughs> and it seems like it's worked pretty well for it you. It has. Well, that's, that's awesome. Now, Many people in our audience may not know the definition of a blended family. So since you have so much experience with it, I'm going to ask you to give us a good definition. <laughs> Absolutely. A blended family is when two people come together and, Pastor, they love each other, they get married, and at least one of them come with children, lovely children, from a previous relationship. <laughs> lovely children. Lovely children. Well, I've known some people that blend with some babies' kids, so it ain't all lovely. Eh? <laughs> but, but anyway... But anyway, you know, when all of these people get together, new kids, new mom, new dad, there are quite a few of emotions that can take place under this new household. And so I want you to share with us some of the feelings that might exist in this blended family environment. The one I love the most is joy. That's when everybody loves each other, Pastor. I am glad you're my stepmom. I'm glad you're my stepfather. And then we have resentment. Okay, I hate this one, but it exists. You know, anger comes in and it stops the, the blended family from being a healthy family. Yeah, that resentment uh, really comes from an angry place and really mm -hmm. it makes a, an unhealthy environment for a family to develop. Anything else that might be happening there? Yes, we have apathy. Apathy is when that person either doesn't express their feelings well or they refuse to express their feelings. So you may ask them something like, Mm, do you like me being your stepmother? Well, I'm, you good. I don't care. Everything's <laughs> all right. You know, you're a good stepmother, whatever, you know. Well, we have uh, joy. We have resentment. We have apathy. Well, if you're dealing with apathy and if you're dealing with resentment in your home, things can get very tense. You know, as a matter of fact, sometimes it can escalate to a crisis. So what we're going to do today we're going to offer you some tips, and we, you can write this down. We're going to use the acronym TABLE. So you can write this down. We're going to give you five tips that can help you have a wonderful experience in a blended family context. Because I want to tell you why this is so important, because most of the people who we love and adore from the Bible grew up or lived in blended families. So, Antoinette, tell us, what does the T in TABLE stand for? The T in TABLE stands for talk. You do that really well. Keep going. <laughs> Blended families, we must talk to each other, and it must be continuous. The second thing, A, acceptance. We have to accept people for who they are, and remember, refuse to judge them. Well, in regards to talking, amen, in regards to talking, the Bible says, speak the truth in love. And when it comes to acceptance, the Bible teaches us not to judge, because to the same degree that you judge others, you will be judged yourself. Amen. Yeah. And so the third thing is, is uh, what's the B for? The B is for believe. You know, we dream about having a wonderful, loving, blended family, but you have to believe that it's going to happen. It's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. And the Bible says that all things are possible <laughs> to the person that believes. Now, I want to offer one. And so I, I want to teach you something here because you're a great talker. I want to teach you to listen. Amen. Yes. Now, God gave us two ears and 
one mouth, which means you ought to listen at least twice as much as you talk. Somebody say amen. Amen. And so um, it's important that we listen. The Bible says be swift to speak, be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. And then finally, use empathy. And that means try to feel what the other person is feeling. If you are the new mom, there are children already there, try to understand what the children <laughs> are feeling. Okay, so let's wrap this up. Blended families can be a blessing. And it's a great place to practice how to love other people who are different from you. So remember, whether your family is blended or not, there's no place like home. Ooh. And we want you to know that <laughs> It, it matters. matters. Good morning. God bless you. This is Pastor Dr. G. I. Tuff. I'm the preacher in the hood. It's going to do you some good. Good morning. You're going to have a blessed day today because I'm going to charge you. I, I thank God this morning for the opportunity to speak to you. And I want to speak to you concerning having a spirit of happiness. Your happiness matters to God. The Bible says in Job 5 and 17, happy is the man whom God corrects. I find that people who allow God to correct them find themselves in happy situations. I also realize that happiness is a state and happiness is a choice. I also know that your joy determines the quality of your decision making. Sometimes we make the wrong decisions and we suffer, and then sometimes we suffer the consequences of other people's wrong decisions. But today, the Bible says that I set before you life and death. If you choose Jesus, you choose life. If you don't, you choose death. I want to talk about Ruth today because the Bible said Ruth made a choice. Ruth could have went back or stayed in Moab. She and her sister-in-law had to make a choice. Ruth decides, I'm leaving Moab. I've had enough of Moab. I'm getting ready to get out of here and I'm going with my Naomi because I believe where she's getting ready to take me is gonna be better than where I come from. And what we have to do today is, Paul said, I forget those things which are behind me. And I press toward the mark of the high call which is in Christ Jesus. And if you want things to get better, you have to stand in a place to be corrected. The Bible tells us that Ruth made that choice to go to Bethlehem, Judah. Bethlehem, Judah was the house of bread with a little bit of praise. And sometimes you just got to learn how to praise your way through. When you wake up in the morning and things not looking the way you think they should look, just wake up and start giving God a praise. Because praise will confuse the enemy. Praise, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Amen. And so the Bible says that Ruth made a choice. Sometimes, glory to God, we don't rejoice with them that rejoice. We, we sometimes get so mad and jealous about what God has done for somebody else, but you didn't make that same choice. Ruth chose to go with Naomi, and because she went with Naomi, she went in, and she had to harvest. She went in when everything was low, when everything was down. But the Bible tells me when they got over into Bethlehem, Judah, 
and they began to get the scraps, they came in harvest, came into a harvest. And when they came into that harvest, we find out that they didn't just come to the harvest, but she happened to get on a par of Boaz. She didn't know that when she left her past behind that she was going to go in work in the harvest, but she ended up working in the harvest, but after a while, she ended up owning the field. So make the right choice today because why? Your happiness matters. I want to bless you all the way from Miami, Opelika, Florida. I am the pastor, Dr. G. Ita from Church of Deliverance through the blood of Jesus. God bless you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. For It Matters, we welcome you to the broadcast this morning. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Acts. Acts, the 26th chapter, and verse 1 and 2. These are the words. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you are permitted to speak for yourself. So Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself. Paul said, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because today I shall answer for myself before you concerning all things of which I am accused by the Jews. Today I want to talk about having the spirit of happiness. Having the spirit of happiness. The Bible says in Proverbs 23 and 7, as a man thinketh, so is he. James Allen, a famous poet, said these words, so a man thinketh, so shall he be. If you think you're successful, you're right. If you think you're a failure, you're right. Either way you think, it's up to you. And so how you think, what's in your cerebral, what's in your medulla, how do you think? How do you see yourself? It's how a man thinks. And so Paul is there before King Agrippa, and he has the opportunity to share with him the gospel. And my brothers and sisters, I want to share with you that we have to manage how we think. You see, our, our happiness is determined on how we think how we think of ourselves, how we think of our situation, how do we think of our future, how do we think of our past, how we think of our present. It's all according to how you think. Paul had been incarcerated, he'd been beat, he'd been scorned, he'd been talked about, and he'd been, he'd been ostracized. He was, he was a renegade, he went from one city to the next. He left Philippi and he was thrown out of Philippi. He was jailed. He was also beaten there in Thessalonica. He was constantly on the run. And he now is standing inside a Roman court. And he's before the emperor. He is before King Agrippa. Now, let me tell you about King Agrippa. King Agrippa came from a lineage of family members who were, were able to terrorize and hurt people. And so King Agrippa's great-grandfather was the one who had Jesus crucified. It also so King Agrippa's grandfather was the one that had John the Baptist's head cut off. And here he is standing before King Agrippa. And King Agrippa says, Paul, I sentence you, I'm allowing you to speak. What say you? And Paul said, King Agrippa, I thank you for this opportunity, but I want to let you know, in spite of all that I've been through, I just want to let you know, I think myself happy. There's somebody here today that has been through a whole lot. You probably had a foreclosure Maybe you had an eviction. Maybe you had some health problems. But in spite of it all, you had to think yourself happy. And God was able to see you through. Because the Bible says, so a man thinketh, so is he. 
I want to ask you today, how are you thinking? You ought not to have thinking, stink, thinking. You ought to be thinking strong. You ought to be thinking victoriously. I want you to know that God is able to help you do anything but fail. The Bible says God will put your mind in perfect peace. Whose mind? Tell your neighbor, God says my mind must be stayed on thee. I'm so glad that we're encouraged today. Paul says I'm happy because first First of all, I'm wiser. I used to kill Christians. I used to crucify them. But now I'm on the Lord's side. I'm wiser. I'm no longer wicked. And so since I'm wiser and I'm not concerned about my future, I'm not concerned about anything, I think myself happy. Let me also tell you why I think myself happy. Although I was incarcerated, although I was in jail, I was able to witness to everyone around me. And God told us, Go ye therefore to all the nation and preach the gospel. Why? Because it matters. God bless you. Pastor Greg Williams. God bless everybody. I am... Uh, Pastor Alain Charles. I'm the pastor of an Haitian church, Haitian church called in French L'Église de Dieu Fleuve d'Eau Vive. In English, it's called Rivers of Living Water Church of God. I am very happy to be here with you just to talk to you, especially about having a spirit of happiness. We live in the time where so many people lost their happiness. Some of them kill their, themselves because they don't know how to get it back. They don't know how to get their happiness back, so they kill themselves. However, tonight we Read in the Bible, especially in John chapter 15, Jesus was talking to some people, and he, he, he said, I am the true wine, and my father is the gardener. You are the branches. If you want to be a fruit, you need to remain in Jesus. And Jesus was talking to them, he say a lot of secret to them, especially if you lose your happiness, you can get it back in Jesus. Because Jesus said in verse 7, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you, want, you, will, you wish and it will be given you. That means whatever you lose, you can get it back in Jesus. If you lose your happiness, Jesus can give it back to you. As long as you believe in Jesus, he can bless you, he can help you have it back. And he, Jesus said in verse 11, he said that I, I have told you all this so my joy may be in you. And your joys may be perfect. That means if you have Jesus in your life, you, you believe in Jesus, he will, he will help you get back your joy. He will help you get back your happiness. Only Jesus can help you have back your happiness. No one else. Even though you smoke cigarette, you cannot have it back. Even though you drink a lot of alcohol, you cannot give it back. You cannot get it back. However, if you listen to the word of God and you believe in Jesus Christ, you can get back your happiness. This is the reason why everyone who believes in Jesus, whatever the, the, the moment in their life, you see they always have joy. Because in Jesus, you can have a complete joy. Only Jesus can give you joy. Only Jesus can help you get it back. Tonight I would let you know, if you, lo if you lost your, your happiness, 
Jesus can get can help you get it back. Let's get back your our happiness in Jesus Christ. Only Jesus can help you have back your happiness. When you believe in Jesus, he gives you his words. And this is what he said, I, told, I have told you this, so my joy may be in you, and your joy may be complete. Look, only Jesus, when you believe in him, he will bless you. And he will help you get your, your, your happiness back. Tonight, I want, you, I want to let you know, if you lost your happiness, we have Jesus. If no one can help you get back your happiness, Jesus can help you. If no one can help you again, maybe you, you feel that you're lonely. No one can, can, can support you. No one can talk to you. No one maybe can help you have it back. Believe in Jesus. Listen the word of God and you will be blessed, my people. Listen, I am the pastor of Rivers of Living Water, Church of God, located at 1835 West Dixie Highway, Miami, Florida, 33161. May God bless you. Believe in Jesus. Remain in Jesus and you will get back your happiness. May God bless you. It matters that you have a spirit of happiness. If you would go with me to John chapter 14, verse 16, it says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Everybody has a spirit. It's either the spirit of darkness or of the light. The Bible says we battle against spiritual wickedness in high places. And what we have to understand is that when you talk about the spirit of happiness, there's only one way to really receive that. Because you see, as creatures of this world, do we ever think that there is something after this life? When you consider that, it ought to concern you of what is there after I take my last breath. Now, Jesus was concerned about his disciples. He was getting ready to leave. And he prayed to the Father that he was sent a comforter. You see, Jesus, while he was here, they could bring all their concerns and their cares directly to him. But he knows now I'm leaving, I'm going back to be with my Father. And since he was going to leave, he knew that these men needed someone who would be able to allow them to confide in, someone that would be able to comfort them, someone who would talk to them and have that sweet voice that gave them direction. You see, brothers and sisters, when you have a comforter called the Holy Spirit, it allows you to be able to be happy in a time of dread. It allows you to be able to walk through fiery brimstone and not feel it. You see, the Holy Spirit is a person who would talk to you in those lonely hours when everybody else is gone and you by yourself. Uh, the Holy Spirit is there to give you guidance when you don't know which way to go. Yeah. So you see, God made way that we would have someone to help us. Uh, he knew that in this time of our lives, uh, when the devil was on our trail, uh, that we would need someone to ward him off. Uh, my Bible tells me that the Holy Spirit comes with fire uh, and it comes with power. Uh, you see, you need something that will hold you uh, and tell you to be still when you're fighting your battle. Uh, I don't know about you, but there was a whole show a long time ago. And the comedian come out and he would say, the devil made me do it. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, the devil can't make you do nothing. Uh, he can tempt you, uh, and you can succumb to temptation. Uh, but he can't make you do nothing. Uh, but with the Spirit of God, uh, you're talking about joy? Uh, I'm here to tell you, you will have joy. Uh, you will have peace. Uh, you will have peace of mind uh, because you have the Spirit of God in you. That's the Spirit that leads and guides you. That's the Spirit that gives you hope. 
for your tomorrow. That's the spirit that lets you know there's something better than what you got right now. Because you see, this old world is not your friend. You're going to have some up time and you're going to have some down time. But the Spirit of God keeps you level because it allows you to understand that this trouble don't last always. That the God you serve has got an escape route for you. So brothers and sisters uh, out there in the world, you need to understand that where is your spirit? Uh, you got happiness in your life? Are uh, you dreading getting up each day? But I'm here to tell you that God got a way for you. That he's provided a means uh, for you to be able to escape this old, old sinful world and still be in this world. And it's called his spirit. For Jesus said that I want to put something in you that's greater than what's outside. I want to put something in you uh, that's greater than those that will come against you. And that's called the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, you need the Spirit of God in order to see God. Without it, you cannot see him. So if you plan on seeing Jesus one day, the Bible tells me you must believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, died on Calvary Cross, rose from the dead, that you might have life and a life abundantly through him. So I pray that you will understand that it matters with God that you have happiness in the spirit. God bless you. I'm inspired. I hope you are too. It's time to head to the office. But before I do, I want to encourage you to come out in person and see these pastors at their services. You can find all of their information on our website. If you can't support them in person, you're welcome to do it through our website. We truly appreciate you. We want you to know that how you start your day matters, and you matter to us. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to be with you this morning. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you and have an amazing day.